there's a video that I saw a while back, which is about the worst Smash tournament of all time. And that's called The Story of Apex 2015, made by a guy named Turn Down for Walt. This is an excellent movie. And I might watch it another time. But that's not what we're watching right now. But there's another video, one that EE e. watched already, that I didn't know about. The worst Smash Brothers tournament, Olympus 2015. I have not been to this tournament. I went to Apex 2015. I have stories about that. I've been there. But I've heard that this one is really bad. How were both of these the worst Smash tournaments? Dude, yeah, 2015 was a bad year. Bad year, truly. 2015 was tough. By the way, yeah, this guy's a NASCAR poster. It's so funny to see these channels and have these videos that are just like, it's NASCAR, 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 Smash Brothers. NASCAR, 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 NASCAR. I mean, I'll give it up. Good for him. But I have not seen this yet. I know nothing about it. I hadn't even heard of this tournament. I've been going to tournaments forever. I don't know what happened in 2015. So let's go ahead and take a look. The day is February 28, 2015, and one of the biggest video game tournaments in the history of South Carolina is about to go straight to hell. What has started off as a landmark day for the Smash Brothers scene in South Carolina will slowly and painfully devolve into embarrassment and misery. But how did this all happen? How did it come to this? And why did it ruin the upstate South Carolina Smash scene for years to come? I'll be the judge of this. At the time, I was a broke-ass college dropout working two part-time jobs and just barely scraping by. So when I had the opportunity to make 50 bucks at a video game tournament, I jumped at the opportunity. Oh, I miss PM. I'd send players to their correct stations, record the results, and move the bracket along. The show went a little late, I think I clocked nearly 9 hours that up. day, but making money off of video games was just too fun of a prospect to pass up. Man, he's Sam with hair. Gracious, bro. <laughs> you let Brandon know that I, I wasn't interested in working again. <laughs> the Darth Vader shirt. By the end of the year, I'd gotten so... <laughs> Oh, no, no, brothers. Why is he wearing a scarf? I think it's hot out. Everybody else, this dude's in a tank top. That guy's in a scarf. He looks like a member of Gryffindor. But the biggest earner by far was Super Smash Brothers. True. Made. Released in 2001 on the GameCube. We make the premise a of the game was fairly simple. Street Fighter V or Marvel vs. Capcom might get 20 or 30 people to show up. Yeah. But Smash Brothers routinely brought in 50, 70, sometimes even 80 people. It's so funny too, because you kind of take it for granted as a Smasher. You kind of just like if I like if I played another fighting game, and I heard that 30 people were at a tournament, I'd be like, dead game. I'm not playing that shit. I gotta fight the same guy over and over in quarters? Fuck that. I'm not playing. No, I, I feel like as an FGC, like, I would not know what to do. Because I feel like that's such a low number coming from Smash. But it's so privileged. We are so lucky. Melee, Project M, a mod for Smash Brothers Brawl, and the newly released Smash Brothers 4 for the Wii U. Evan and Matt are hyped as hell for this. They even run out a venue to deal with the massive crowd, the Clemson Arts Center. Commentators would have the biggest matches of the day. Dude. There was a there was a cursed time. I want you guys to know this. Before Smash 4, Smash commentators would wear whatever they wanted. They were wear hoodies, they were shirts, they were jackets, they were overalls, they would wear jumpsuits, they wear whatever they wanted. Now, Smash commentators will wear basically whatever they want. They will they'll wear hoodies, they'll wear uh, their team sponsors, tank tops, whatever. During one time between 2014 and 2016, we all got dressed up, and I don't know why. I think we all wanted to make Nintendo happy. <laughs> we were all like, maybe Nintendo will notice us. Literally, all of us got dressed up. Not a joke. We wear button-ups. A lot of them would wear blazers and ties, and it's so funny that now we've reverted back. In January, the event is Simps, beginning to take shape, of. and more and more people yeah, are generating a buzz about Olympus. Evan and Matt were originally expecting somewhere in the neighborhood of 150, but now it looks like more than 200 will show up. Oh gosh. There are overflow rooms available, and Matt and Evan seem like they're set and ready to deal with the extra crowd size when I ask them about it. But it's worth noting that they oh, aren't just making man. money on entry fees. There's also a venue fee of 10 bucks, so they make money on every person that enters the art center that day, whether they're running in the tournament or not. The showrunners are financially incentivized to get as many people through the door as possible. This would end up being the single biggest fatal flaw in the entire tournament. Oh, God. Was Overwatch out before this? Same time? This was the beta? Okay. I didn't know if this was, like, taken after the event or what. My, it, like, fucked with my brain. I was like, what? Another guy is there setting up coolers all over the place. He works with Red Bull, <laughs> the energy drink company. 
and is just there to supply free energy drinks. <laughs> it's a for bunch of coolers everywhere. One small problem. He's brought the wrong brand of Red Bull. He pulls all of his materials as we're still setting up unfolding tables and chairs, and he'll have to drive all night back to Charlotte to get the right <laughs> stuff and bring it back on the day of the tournament. That poor bastard. You brought, wait, they can't let you rock with the normal Red Bulls? He had brought the wrong Red Bull and they're making him go back? Just let him use that one. That's, I can't believe they would do that to him. That's so sad. As we're finishing setting up the room, the manager of the venue tells us to pack up and move everything. What? Why? Well, there's a poetry reading happening tonight in the main hall. And he wasn't told we were converting the venue tonight. Apparently, some sort of horrific miscommunication had occurred. Oh. We ask if we can just wait it out and set up later, but this poetry deal is going to take hours. We pile everything back up into our vehicles and agree to set up everything on the day of show. All of us except Evan. Evan had invited a few Smash players from out of town to crash at his place before the event. That's usually except that during his communication with them, several more people had been quote-unquote invited to stay at Evan's residence. There's more Dude. than a dozen people at that two-bedroom condo, and they're playing Smash and Rough Housing well into the night. This shit happened all the fucking time! This shit sucked! Homie code? You would invite three people from out of state. You'd be this happened to this happened to me so fucking much. I'd be like, hey man, hey, you guys wanna come down? Yeah, you can stay at my place. You invite some people down, and then three people become four, become five, become six, become seven, and then you're living like fucking sardines. It was so bad. I'm so glad we're past this era. Good God. Some don't show up until 1 a.m. There's so many people at Evan's place that some are even sleeping on the stairs. Yeah. But another problem arises. It's so weird We don't have enough setups. Now. GameCubes and 14-year-old copies of Melee don't exactly grow on trees, so we can't just run out and buy more. But Matt and Evan say that's taken care of. They've offered to have the door fee of anybody who brings in a complete setup. TV, GameCube, and a copy of Smash. Oh, Wait, no. hold up. Another group of people getting their door fees waived? So yeah. we're chipping away at our main source of revenue. We open up the doors and start registering people at 9 a.m. sharp. There's a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people. It you know what's insane? I don't recognize anybody in this video. I know Esam. That's it. It was hours that's crazy. before I could even see the end of the line. So many people, in fact, that people are coming up to us by 10 a.m. saying that there's nowhere to park, and they weren't wrong. The Clemson Art Center's Man. parking lot was barely enough for this. What the fuck? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's maybe 25 parking spaces here. What the fuck? Where will they go? But we never gave anybody at that location a heads up as to what we were doing. We kind of just told people towed. to park there and prayed that nobody got towed. They're all getting also, towed. Also, this is done by word of mouth and a loudspeaker. Facebook posts are made, but by now it's way too late. People are parking all over the grounds, all up and down Butler <laughs> and Gantt Street. It's honestly a miracle we didn't get the cops called on us for creating a massive... There's cars everywhere. everywhere. ...cars in the area. The final tally of unique players at that event isn't 150, it's 260. We are in no way, shape, or form prepared to deal with this many people, oh. most of which come from out of state. Plus, we don't just have 260 people here, we have 260 people plus their entourage. Yeah. It's impossible to tell, but there's at least 320 people there by most estimates. Yeah, Despite I was gonna the say, it's always bigger than outside, the, yeah. the inside of the venue is already starting to get hot and humid with that many people crowded inside. But during registration, I also had to take care of giving out discounts to people who brought setups. I'm directing those people to Josh and Will who have to pick places to place the systems. One kid yeah, even brings a 30 inch them? tube TV on a pair of hand trucks as his setup. Why? I hear Josh say over my shoulder, hell no, get that thing out of here. <laughs> the kid protests saying that he brought a full set up and wants a discount. 30 inches? Before Jesus long, all Christ. the overflow rooms are filled too. And now we're having to turn people away who brought full setups. Yeah. Now, 30 setups get turned away, but to avoid the ire of any players, we still give them a discount. About 60 people get their venue fees cut in half. Oh my God. Melee doubles ends an hour late, and melee singles are started at least two hours They lost the $300 150 there. 150 people have registered just for that tournament alone. I try to get a hold of Matt Sharp during the ordeal, but there's one big problem. Matt Sharp is participating in the tournament. No! <laughs> Dude, when people who are running the tournament play in the tournament, I forgot that used to be a thing. That doesn't really happen at tournaments I go to anymore, I guess because I don't go to locals. This shit would kill brackets. It was so bad. Wait, what about all those volunteer assistant TOs? Well, they're not wearing any staff t-shirts, there's no way to identify them, they don't have any walkie-talkies, and we don't have their cell phone numbers to text them. A good chunk of them were from the same group that had driven all the way from Myrtle Beach, clear on the other side of the state. When they all got eliminated early, they just dipped and left us for dead. <laughs> it's a learning experience. 
Those unused setups get commandeered by players wanting to play friendly and money matches outside of bracket. Yeah. One thing to remember about Smash players is that they live for Smash. Yes. They want to play it 24-7. Yeah. So when we find it's a free weird. setup to run bracket matches on, we have to shoo away a bunch of players trying to play friendlies, get the attention of the tournament entrants, corral them to the setup, and then shoo away the new Smash players who have already taken up residence at that setup again. Yeah, it's so weird. Smashers want to play Smash so fucking much. I get that you're there to play the video game, but like if you're ever at a national and like top eight is going on on the screen, there are hordes of people not watching. They're just there to play. And like, you know, that's fine. But like, you could have done that anywhere. By top eight day, how do you still not have enough Smash in your system? At one point around 4 or 5 p.m., Evan spots Will moving dividers outside to the backyard of the venue. Evan asks Will what he's doing. Will responds, we need these to keep the sun out of people's eyes. What? Evan asks, not understanding <laughs> oh, what's going no. on. Oh, no. Will takes Evan outside. Somebody has run an extension cord outside, and there are several stations set up outdoors. Evan asks Will, That's are these sick. tournaments in bracket? Will answers dejectedly, I don't know, and I really don't care at this point. That's a cool idea. Bro, playing outside is kind of base. I like that. Outside smash rules. Melee singles is a complete mess. Hey, at least By it didn't PM, rain. At least it didn't rain, right? They want me to organize Smash 4 singles, which are already running an hour behind. Smash 4 was the newest game in the series that had just released a few months ago. Which As made such, it this the game best. requires HD flat screens and newer consoles. Thankfully, the players have the setups in spades, but the overflow rooms are all taken. So I grabbed Josh and Will oh, I didn't and we started putting together yeah, setups. Yeah, you can't even play hallway. on the same setups. Smash 4 singles was run entirely in the hallways in the foyer of the venue. For all these melee players acting like their game is so good. You guys go play in the hallway. You put the new game in the hallway? Come on. We're the new game. We deserve the spot. At this point, only PM singles and doubles are left. He answers, we're about halfway done. I relay this information to halfway. Evan and he breathes a sigh of relief. As we enter the final few rounds of Smash 4 a couple of hours later, I go back to Matt and ask how PM singles go. He says, we just started. Oh, so he lied. Matt says an assistant T.O. had told him that they were running singles, so he kept playing in his doubles match. As soon as he realized a screw-up, he canceled the final bit of PM oh doubles and split God. the pot five ways. I was at a loss for words. It was well past 9 p.m. at this point. <laughs> Melee singles had taken seven hours to complete, and PM singles had a similar number of players and was going to take just as long. There is no at hope of 9 p.m.? I'm now on a sinking ship with no damage control options left. So... I, I think some people might be watching this and be thinking, you know, who cares? It's not a big deal. Just start the tournament or do it the next day. When you have a tournament this big, you have people coming in from everywhere. So you have people driving two, three hours, and they probably don't plan to be there every single day. If they have lodging somewhere, like a hotel or something, you can't do that. You have to get it all done on that same day. So they're kind of fucked. We have to be out of the venue by midnight. But Evan talks with the manager of the property and negotiates another hour. But 1 a.m. is the hard cutoff. We you have to be play packed mad up and out fast. of the by then. The manager is locking the doors One at stop 1 a.m. regardless of who or what is still inside. At midnight, PM Singles has finished its pools and moves to a 32-man double elimination bracket. But Evan and Matt call it quits. They have one hour to do a 32-man bracket. The prize pot will be split 32 ways. Okay. That's fine. Making the final payout $15 per person. Just enough to Pay cover the out. fee and the entry fee. Some players beg Evan to continue the tournament over at his house, but Evan has had enough and refuses. True. It'll be 1 a.m. by the time the venue is cleared out and 1.30 by the time he rolls back to his apartment. As me and Josh are packing up the setups that belong to Olympus, some people are even still trying to play friendly matches if we try to herd people out the door. Stop! Josh unceremoniously rips an extension cord from the Stop wall. Stop playing the, the fucking game! matches into darkness. We kind of just stand there a while not knowing what to say. Evan hands me, Josh, and Will, Benjamin, a piece, and we all head back to our homes. Oh my Josh and I God, were roommates dude. at the time, and we had driven to the tournament together. We didn't say much on the ride back. It was a total disaster, and there wasn't much left to discuss. Plus, we were just too tired. Yeah. What few stories we do exchange were just us venting from the whole ordeal. We try to piece together what went wrong, but we soon realized that listing what went right would make for a shorter list. On the 45-minute drive back to Pattersville from Clemson, we spot one bright spot on the way back. The welcoming red neon glow of a jack-in-the-box. We stop for a consolatory <laughs> burger, but my stomach is so tore up from drinking Red Bull all day that I can't even finish it. I come home, oh, pick up an Amazon package part of at all. my door that thankfully hadn't been stolen, and fall face first onto my bed. The next day, the reviews are starting to trickle in on oh, Smash God. boards and social media. Dude, this is tough. When people start reviewing your tournament, oh no. Yeah, th this is when you start getting blown the fuck out. Olympus was the this worst Smash bad. tournament in the history of South Carolina. Yeah. The players from Georgia are ripping us to shreds. Evan and Matt go completely. <laughs> this guy, 
So actually, I have a not so good story about this event. Really? Actually, is that true? You don't say. You had a bad experience here at a tournament that didn't end until 1 a.m. and top 32 was split evenly, $15 each? Evan and Matt go completely dark, not Man. even attempting to do damage control for fear of further antagonizing people. And chief among the angry tournament goers is Fatality, one of the biggest names in the Smash community both then and now. He was there and his scathing review of the tournament was entirely earned. But to his credit, he did give us some constructive criticism. In the months that ensued, Evan laid low but eventually got back into holding tournaments and had quite Good a bit him. of success in later years, having learned from his mistakes in 2015. Good for him. He also knew not to even go near the Olympus name for future tournaments. True. Instead, he focused on using Olympus as the brand for his esports team. He had some success with the guys on his roster. Is Instead, that he focused on using Olympus as the brand for his esports team. That's our thing. Good for them. Team. Good shit. He had some success with the guys on his roster. Oh, that's literally at the smaller our thing. tournaments and places. I think I commentated that ones. match. But in yes. 2020, okay. Evan sold off the team to pursue other opportunities. As for me, I never ran another tournament ever again. The reputation of the <laughs> upstate smash scene was pretty well tarnished by that point. Evan told me sometime later that after a vase had been broken in one of the runoff rooms, he ended up only netting 1k for the event. Considering the headache that it was, the months of planning that that's had gone into it, it, and the damage to his reputation, it was hardly worth it. I had received 100 bucks for what had been a 16 hour work day. <laughs> and even if another tournament had popped up, I probably would have declined to help out anyway. We bit off more than we could chew, and at any point, any one of us could have stepped up to say so. The writing was on the wall early on, but we were so blinded by the money and the glory that nobody wanted to speak up. The money and the glory. All of the fame and fortune of a $100 check. Listen, I've been him. Truly. I've been this young man. At Apex 2015, for all the hours I did of work, for everything that I did... I got paid $50 for the whole weekend, and I was thrilled. I wasn't even young. I was 26. 26. I was 26 years old, and I got paid $50 for Apex. Not a joke. Not a joke. People have jobs at 26. I had a big boy job. I had a big boy job. I just also commentated Smash events. I've been this guy. <laughs> the money and the power. I just, I, I get it. I really do. It wasn't like I signed up for $50. This is how the environment worked. I want you guys to picture this. We got asked if we wanted to commentate an event, and we were like, yeah. And then we just showed up. We didn't get told what we were getting paid. We just got told we were getting paid. I'll never forget, the first big boy paycheck I ever got from Smash was from some 2GG event. I don't think it was Civil War. And I didn't think I was getting paid. I, I, I got the invite, and I thought that's all I was getting was an invite out and a hotel. We never talked about payment. And then I got home, and I had a check in the mail from them, I think it was Esports Arena, for several hundred dollars. Huh? And the rest is history. But yeah, this is, this, this I've been this guy. I get it. We dreamed big, but flew too close to the sun. Anyway, that about wraps it up. I'm Slap Shoes, and I'm sorry you had to watch this. Listen, as somebody who didn't go to the event, I accept your apology. You're right, we can laugh about this later. We can have a hearty chuckle. <laughs> you did a bad job. This kind of shit happens, man, and I feel for this guy, because this poor guy, like, he got put in such an un... Like, you don't sign up for this. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what's going to happen. And then this shit just plops into your lap. I have less sympathy if you have a series that's a national series over many years and consistently your pools start at 8 p.m. There's one event that was notorious for being a huge issue in terms of timing. It was crazy. All those tournaments were disasters, truly. Okay, well this one was pretty bad. I don't know if it's the worst tournament I've ever seen, I was at Apex 2015, and I'm going to look into that next. But I hope you guys enjoyed this look back into the past at Olympus 2015. Listen, this is how it was. I was around for it. Maybe some of you were too. This is how we lived. This is what we've come up from. So every time you see Smash Majors, and you see all the glitz and the glamour, and all the fame and all the lights and everything, just remember, we used to be in this book club convention thing whatever this was <laughs> having to put up d derailers to stop the sun from shining in our eyes it was so sad so hey if you want to be a part of the growth subscribe to the channel huh maybe please so i never have to go back to that please <laughs> i'm too i'm too used to this lifestyle now i can't go back to that please subscribe 
for the love of God. <laughs> I've, I lived in the darkness for so long. <laughs>